course, uh, every Tuesday, 20 after 4, football in the 20s, our good friend, our Eagles insider and NFL insider, John McMullen. Johnny Mac joins us. Um, so, big trade. How about that? Feeling pretty good about yourself right about now if you're an Eagles fan. Yeah, big news. Big splash. Big splash. The NFL <laughs> trade deadline, as usual, uh, putters to the finish line. Everybody's all this out. It's getting, getting crazy now. You get younger GMs and, yeah. It's the same as always. It's not baseball. It's not basketball. No. It's not hockey. No, no, no. There is more, more, you know, if you think about it, there is more movement, but it's still a trickle compared to other sports. And it usually happens before the actual trade deadline day. So we ever saw the Eagles trade yeah. Joe Flacco and Zach Ertz. So. Uh, but, yeah, Howie always likes to do something. So Terry Vincent Jr., enjoy it. There you go. Get that football card out ASAP um what what we won't dive too much into the Eagles waxing of Detroit 44 to 6 I mean I I was oh big time off to mark on that one but look I I don't care if the Lions are a bad football team because I would be a hypocrite because I actually picked the Lions to win this game outright however how about the Philadelphia Eagles getting the ground game going 236 yards averaging five a clip 46 carries I mean I was shocked it was working for him. Hurts didn't need to sling it all over the place. Efficient 9 of 14 for a buck 3 The offensive line kept him upright. I know it's cliche, but a win is a win is the NFL. I mean, I don't really look at this as a Hurts game. The defense made plays. We know Detroit's not a good football team. But how about the fact that they decided we're going to run the football a little bit on Sunday? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's good. I, I, I said I thought the Eagles would win the game, but predict that they win. I thought it would be close, but, um, you know, Detroit had been playing close games for the most part leading up to that game. So even though they are winless, I, I, I did give them credit for playing hard for the most part, but they, they suffered a few more injuries on the offensive line at cornerback and they just kind of fell apart. I, I, you know, I think there's two things. I think you give the Eagles credit as you just did for, you know, going on a business trip and taking care of business. And I, I don't think it's mutually exclusive to also say you, you learned absolutely nothing from this game. Nothing. That's how bad Detroit was. And, it, you know, for people saying, oh, they have the formula. No, no, they don't. They didn't find anything because it starts this week with the Chargers. And look, the Chargers can't stop the run against anybody. No. But you can't run the football 46 times against the Chargers for the obvious reasons that they're going to score some points. So, you know, with Justin Herbert, they come down to earth a little bit, but they're still capable of moving the football, and that means you're going to have to move the football. So, you know, this season, if this season is about what we were told it's about, you learn nothing about Jalen Hurts. You continue to not learn nothing about Jalen Hurts. They protected him. They got through the game. Yep. It, it's They're trying to serve two masters, and Nick Sirianni's trying to win games, and he deserves credit for getting the game. But the Eagles know nothing about their quarterback, and we're halfway through the season. Which I think, to me, is the most alarming thing, right? I mean, again, you wanted to throw him out there. I mean, on the surface, you look at the numbers, 61 completion percentage, 61%, close to 2,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, four picks. He's been sacked 14 times. He's had it close to 500 yards scrambling with his legs. Okay, all well and good. Not horrible, horrible numbers, but you're right. I need to see a situation where you got to go 60, 70, 80 yards under three minutes to go, one time out, trail by six. You know, put me in that position. And even then, I still don't know if I learned anything about the quarterback. Like, I, I just think it's almost like they're stuck in purgatory with this quarterback situation. That, that's the way I look at it. Because what if he plays, you know, what if he throws 23 touchdown passes, seven interceptions, throws for 3,500 yards, 700 yards rushing, and they win five games? What, what does that really mean? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I take the running part out of it because I, I know he's a good runner. I, I know that. I, I know that's, that's part of his skill set uh, that is going to help you. It's the other stuff you're concerned about. And, uh, I think when you see the, the, the pocket uh, awareness is lacking, it continues to be 
sort of got this default setting of flushing to the right, yep. doesn't yep. climb the pocket. None of this stuff is improving, uh, and that's a concern. And, and while I do say, you know, maybe uh, uh, my take coming out of the Detroit game is maybe the Eagles have decided. They understand what they have in Jalen Hurts, and they've already decided, okay, we got to go in a different direction. We're going to try to protect this quarterback as much as we can, win as many games as much as we can uh, in 2021, and we're going in a different direction is next year. Believe? In fact, if you pin me down, that's what I say. That's what I would say is going on. That's what you And you believe that? You honestly, to a man, believe that? Yes. Yes, I think they've made their decision. Wow. So then, what? I mean, how do you even forecast? Like, wh- what are they banking on trying to make a play for Watson or, by the grace of God, Rodgers out of Green Bay or Russell Wilson out of Seattle? I mean, I, I just, I don't know. You- yeah, they're going to get involved. They're going to have plenty of draft capital. They're going to have plenty of money. Uh, Carson Wentz comes off the book. So anybody who's available. Uh, now, Aaron's not going to play here. Uh, he's going to want to be towards the West Coast, probably Denver. Um, Russell Wilson, I can't imagine Seattle um, letting him go, but if by some strange circumstances uh, he's on the market, they'll be involved there. They've wanted him since he was drafted. Uh, they still love him as a player. Um, so everybody's on, uh, you know, everybody's in the mix, and obviously they've wanted Deshaun Watson for a long time, but things have to be cleared up. Uh, in the legal case, and he doesn't want to play here. So there, there's a ton of hurdles um, they have to overcome for any potential veteran. And by the way, there's always some other veterans that will come loose. Uh, Kirk Cousins, who knows what he, where he's going to be. Um, players like that, of that ilk. Uh, and then the draft. I mean, if you've seen, and, and I don't have time to follow college football this this time, but I, I, I do think it's notable that I keep talk, talking to NFL people and that name, Kenny Pickett, keeps coming up, keeps coming up, keeps coming up. And I don't care about, you know, the draft mix or the draft Twitter, all that stuff. Yeah, when you hear NFL people say it, it's real. And his his rise is, is real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the kid from uh, just broke uh, Marino's career. Touchdown record. Um, you mentioned the Vikings, and they were in a spot the other night where, you know, you think, okay, is it going to be prime time? Kurt Zimmer with the issues again, coaching and whatnot, and, you know, they just fall flat on their face. Cooper Cup throws for 325. That's a nice win for Dallas, knowing that Prescott wasn't going to be there. They improved to 6-1. and one. Then, conversely, you got Tampa Bay struggling against the Saints. Saints lose Winston. They've got quarterback issues, but yet they're 5-2, and two, Tampa 6-2. and two. So you got those three teams kind of jumbled up. And then you look what happened last Thursday night. I mean, you know, that's a game where if you're an Arizona Cardinals fan, you say to yourself, here's my litmus test, right? And then for some inexplicable reason, Murray decides to make that throw. Green, a veteran guy, looks like he's watching the grass grow. And they get the pick late, and Green Bay hangs on for the win. I mean, the NFC... Right now, when I look at it, for my money, I still believe the Rams are the best team in the NFC. And then they make the trade, obviously, for Von Miller. So they upgrade that defense. They're telling you, we're going for it. Right now on paper, who is, in your estimation, the best team in the NFC? Yeah, I think the Rams, I agree with you. I think they're the best team on paper. And you add Von Miller to Aaron Donald. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. The Rams are telling you. And they should be. I, I mean, too many teams in this league are obsessed with draft picks, and they tell you every year, we don't give a you-know-what about draft picks, and they shouldn't because they're that close, um, and they're going all in, and I think they are the best team. Now, uh, Green Bay always concerns me because I love the quarterback, sure. and, and the court, if, they're, if they're healthy and, uh, and clicking on all cylinders at the end of the season, that's always a concern. In Tampa Bay, look, the NFC all of a sudden is much deeper than the AFC. Uh, and uh, I thought the exact opposite would be the case, at least at the top. When you, you look at the NFC, you can make a credible case for the Rams, the yep. Packers, yep. the Bucks, And and I, I don't think Arizona is ready to be in that category. Dallas, maybe they are. I mean, they're a pretty good team. And we saw Randy Gregory. I mean, Randy Gregory 
has had so many issues um, over the years with uh, drug dependency, and, and he's finally uh, healthy. Uh, he's finally uh, out of NFL sort of purgatory from a suspension standpoint. He's playing well. Yeah. yeah. And if DeMarcus Lawrence comes back, and they got both of those guys, all of a sudden that defense, you know the offense was going to be good. Yep. Yeah. Um, if that defense is middle of the road, and if they have those two guys with Trayvon Diggs on the back end, it's a pretty good team on paper as well. Yeah, had a couple hits against Cousins, had the sack. He's already got five this year. His career high was six in 2018. He only played 14 games that season. He's only played six this year, Gregory. So I agree with you on that one. Um, I want to get back to a couple things regarding NFL trade deadline, trade deadline coming and going. Um, you know, the Fletcher Cox situation, I mean, I, I, is this really a surprise that he didn't get moved? I mean, people acting like, oh, you know, after everything he's, he said, his contract, his lack of production, they got to move and they got to move him. I mean, look, if there's no takers out there or what the Eagles want to return doesn't justify trading him away from another team standpoint, the guy's not going to get moved. So, I mean, any shock here that 4 o'clock passes and he's still with the Eagles? No, I, I, I think the bigger shock is the Eagles were trying to move them. They were trying to move them because they would take a, a significant dead cap hit because they've, they've uh, uh, reworked the contract so many times. Uh, but it's pretty clear that they uh, decided they weren't going to give them away, but they would have preferred to move them even with the dead money, which is, you know, hell, it was a surprise to me they did it with Carson Wentz. But once you get to these points where guys don't want to be in a certain situation, uh, maybe it's better to take their medicine. And I think that was the Eagles uh, philosophy that if people wanted to offer up a Don Miller-like deal, uh, they probably would have thought about it. But the difference is, you know, Denver agreed to pay um, the vast majority of Miller's uh, remaining salary. So that made it a little bit more palatable for the Rams where in the case of Cox the Eagles wanted the team that was acquiring him to not only give up that type of, of return but also take on the rest of the salary so uh, it wasn't going to happen I find it amusing because I said this years ago when I felt the Giants had to get rid of Odell Beckham I just felt injury prone I think Eli made him into what he was He's a shell of a wide receiver. His production has gone down dramatically in Cleveland. He's dealt with injuries. And then his father comes out with that video and basically says, you know what, let's just blame it on the quarterback who, again, Mayfield was out there slinging with one arm. Uh, There's social media for you. I, I don't know. Like, are they – did they – you know, it seems as though they tried their damnedest, maybe the Beckham family per se, to put it out there where they want to get traded. I mean, this is a guy – and I think you said it too – He'll wind up his career with three, four different teams. I mean, I, I am still surprised that Beckham is on the Cleveland Browns roster. I really am. I, I thought maybe a fringe team, you know, can you like a Green Bay use another weapon, maybe you make a trade for him because, you know, I don't think you really have to give uh, that much up for Beckham. Yeah, I, I'm, you're, you're probably right. And if you are a team like Green Bay, you should probably, you know, Green Bay even more than the Rams should be all in this season uh, because this might be the last uh, go-round for Aaron Rodgers. And that seems to be the case that they agreed on, uh, upon that both sides of that spectrum. So if that's the case, you better go for it this year. And, yeah, I, I, I mean, they need uh, – an extra receiver um, to help with Devontae Adams, obviously, uh, would make Aaron Rodgers happy. Um, and and, and it would, I, I think it would have been a nice fit. But you always need to the tango in these types yeah. of situations. And Odell Beckham is, has a reputation now. Unfortunately, there's a lot of teams who don't want to bring that type of thing in. You look at it locally. I'm certainly not comparing the players, but... You know, Jalen Rager wants out of here because things have not gone his way. And he, he he's done nothing in his young career, but nobody wants Jalen Rager. So you can ask for a trade uh, all you want. It doesn't mean it's going to get worked out. And OBJ has, you know, kind of sunk himself to Sean Jackson the same way. Yeah. 
uh, with the Rams. <laughs> Which, why would you, <laughs> you, you want to be on? You want to be on a contender? Yeah, exactly. You are a contender. Shut up and play. I, I know. I know. I don't get it. I, I, I mean, you're talking about a seven-one team that just uh, added a Hall of Fame defensive player. You're saying we're going to go for it all season long. You have an opportunity to get a ring here, right? I mean, I, yeah. I just. It does not make sense to me at all. It really doesn't. I mean, look, he's not Woods. He's not Cup. I mean, he's – I don't even – you want to sit there and say, all right, he's Van John, uh, Jefferson, fine. But Deshaun Jackson can still stretch the field and play. You've got a very good team. Why would you want out of that situation is beyond me. Because he doesn't want to be a role player. He doesn't want to be the first receiver and get the ring. He, no. he wants to be a bigger part of the offense. And as you mentioned, I, I mean, other than Devontae Adams, I, I think Cooper Cup has been the best receiver in football. That's how good he's been. I and we all know how good Robert Woods has been. You mentioned Jefferson. He's an impactful player. Matthew Stafford's playing lights out. Everything is clicking for that Rams team. You can ride that to a Shady McCoy-type situation who didn't even play and finally got two Super Bowl rings on Kansas City Field <laughs> Bay back-to-back. But for whatever reason, you know, there's certain guys who, who, you know, they want to be involved more than they want to win. And late in your career, I think there's more guys who are willing to accept being role players. Sean's obviously not one of them. Yeah. Listen, I, I remember Seth Jr. years ago, Green Bay, then Denver, finally got the ring. I mean, you look at Sean Jackson, his last impactful season was 2016. He's yeah. hurt I, mean, I mean, it's tough. It's always tough for these guys to admit they aren't what they once were. Um, and some guys can, and some guys can't. What, what did you make of Robert Sala's comments regarding the quarterback situation in New York after uh, uh, the Mike White game, which was reminiscent uh, for all Jet fans in the late 70s, early 80s, of one Matt Robinson coming on? I mean, he basically, he, he left it up where, uh, you know what, well, you know, he's, I'm not saying Wilson is the guy. Right now it's, you know, it's 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 a uh, evolving situation, so to speak. I mean, they're going to try to... Well, Wilson is the guy. I mean, it, there's, no, there's no harm because he's such a young player uh, in saying, look, we're, you know, give him a little push, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But any time you take a quarterback where the Jets took Zach Wilson, I mean, they're riding him. Uh, so you understand that he's, he's the long-term guy. And the same thing happened with, with Cooper Rush on Sunday Night Football. I mean, there's sometimes when you have these situations where a backup comes in, and it's human nature to kind of say, oh, uh, you know, and, and probably in Dallas it's even more understandable because Dak Prescott's a star player. And he kind of let out uh, a breath and say, all right, we're going to have it easy tonight. All of a sudden you don't have it easy Um I think that was the case. I mean, if you look at the Jets, they're picking up Joe Flacco because <laughs> they had no uh, confidence in, in, in White. Um, so, and, and and by the way, he's going to come back down to earth. This team gets filmed, and if he continues to play, they're going to make adjustments, and it's probably going to get ugly. The difference is with the Jets and the backup quarterback situation, it was a dumb move to bring Flacco back because it's not like you can see what you have with some of those younger players with Joe Flacco out there. So they should have went into the season with a veteran backup as opposed to just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think think the indication is, you know, before the game, and now everybody is is playing that revision history because the guy throws for 400 yards... (laughs) What? They had no confidence in the kid before the game. That That's what that Flacco trade tells you. They tell you that, oh, my God, we're going to have to play Mike White. We're, we're screwed. And turned out to be the case that it was anything but. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they have Joe Flacco back, and now Joe's not even going to play most likely. Yeah. Like. yeah. All right, Johnny Mac, um, I'm glad that your headset is not giving you any issues. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I wonder, you know, if the NFL chimed in on that and said, we, we don't have any reports of issues. I wonder if Joe Judge knows the uh, the communication system cuts off at 15 seconds. I, I start to wonder about these coaches he's not at an, times. Listen, he's not an NFL head coach. He's just not. He, you, yeah. cannot preach de- you cannot preach discipline 
and wax poetic about, you know, we're going to fight, we're going to work on things, we're going to be a disciplined team, and then you lose three games in the last 70 seconds combined, and you have these horrible penalties. I mean, you just, you can't. I, I can't accept it anymore. I'm not even going to blame the quarterback, and the defense played well last night. It's just his head coach is in over his head. He's a clown. He's an absolute clown. Yeah, I, I, I can't talk. You know, I tend not to get upset uh, about the penalties. And I don't know. You're obviously following the Giants far closer than I am. But they just call these penalties every week. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this league is doing. Uh, so I, I think that affects every team at some point. And people sort of contextualize it down to their particular team that they're watching. It happens to every team. But so hold on. Hold it, on a second. Hold on a second. False starts in the most... Well, no, pre-snap, yeah. Pre-snap. And, 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 and roughing the passer when you got to lay up. And then now, taunting, roughing the passer, taunting. I mean... Taunting. If you saw, if you saw the game. roughing the passer... Which game? Cincinnati uh, and Dallas, the, the Dallas roughing the passer... Which almost lost them the game. Yeah. I mean, the guy's just tackling the quarterback. I I, I don't yeah. know what to say about that. But here's here's my problem. And the Cincinnati and Jets game was bad. You watched the game last night. Eli Penny makes a 17 yard gain, keeps the drive alive. Then he gets up, flips the ball, and points at the player. You're eight weeks in the NFL season. This guy's been in the NFL for the last couple of years. You know you're going to give the Zebras any opportunity to throw the flag. You just stay away and you don't do it. That's on coaching. That's got to be on coaching. Well, I, I mean, I, I see, I, I'm, I'm the opposite with the toning rule. I, I think that rule, the rule is absurd. I agree. I think the league, and the league is absurd. And, and coaches kind of preach, you know, emotion is part of this game. I talked to a lot of coaches over the years, so I mean, yeah, you get fired up when you make a big play, um, and sometimes uh, it, it, it goes a little sideways on you. But again, that's that's a rule that has affected many teams across the league, and yeah, it's easy to blame it on the head coach. I mean, they tell the guys, but it's a very, and a, as I said, it's a very emotional game. And if you make a big play, you want to celebrate the big play and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, there's difference. If you're gonna if you're gonna bark in somebody's face, who's been barking in your face, I, I don't care about that. I, I think the league is absurd when they throw flags like that. It, it, it tarnishes like the old Supreme Court decision with pornography. I'll tell you when I see it. I know it. I'll tell you when I see tarnishing. I know what it is. Ninety percent of the time. And when they call toning, it's not toning. I mean, you, you got to leave on the high note. You have to. I got to let you get out of here on the high note like that. He is uh, John McMullen, Johnny Mac. Give him a follow on Twitter as well. And by the way, absolutely just crushing it with the morning show. I'll just leave it at that. You guys are just crushing it. I appreciate that, Rich. Hey, I don't know if you're serious, but I appreciate it. I Johnny Mac. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm nothing but genuine, my friend. I mean, come on now. You know this. <laughs> no, you guys are doing a good show. It's an entertaining show. And even the post as well. Um, but, yeah, everyone should definitely follow John on Twitter, at JF McMullen, Birds 365 show. They do a really nice job. He's all over the place. He's opinionated. It's good insight. They got a good cast with that postgame show as well, covering the birds and that gang. So, Johnny Mac, I always appreciate you, pal. All right, thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. All right, you got to be well. Have a good Tuesday. 446, quick timeout. Automotive map presents.